Hey, what's up, everybody? Jeremy here. And guys, I'm very excited for the conversation we're going to have today. We're chatting with Danielle Hayden, who is the CEO of Kickstart Accounting. And uh, I really want to dive into today, you know, things you need to be thinking like a CFO about of your business. And uh, I think we're going to have a great conversation today. Danielle, thanks for hanging out with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, It's one of my favorite things to do. So So I I want to find out first and foremost, because something I found really interesting in your bio um, is you call yourself a reformed corporate CFO. Um, Why are you reformed? Yeah. You know, I think, uh, especially in the entrepreneurship world, we can carry a lot of stories about what the CFO or chief financial officer was in our corporate days. So mm-hmm. for anybody who is an entrepreneur now, but worked in corporate at one, one time, you might think of, of that position as pretty, pretty stuffy. Um, they're mm-hmm. usually the person who walks around the office saying, no, that's not within the budget. We can't afford that. You're not allowed to buy it. Um, and my, my position was, was really different in, in my corporate career. And then I really empowered the CEO. I really empowered our board of directors, our management team. And, and so it's really been my goal to kind of reform the whole role and how mm-hmm. we look at finances, how we look at chief financial officer, um, how we can continue to like build, build that role so that really supports the growth of the business. Not the person that's walking around like shaking their fingers. And, you know, I, I picture the, um, the people walking around the, the pocket protectors, um, <laughs> anybody used to watch Saved by the Bell, um, you know, the pocket I, I don't protectors. know. I think of the movie office space when you start talking. Okay. About that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm I'm curious to find out then, you know, like as kind of, you know, hanging up your own shingle and, and, you know, starting the company Kickstart Accounting, what did you, what did you want to do differently in the finance world? Like what did you kind of want to change versus what you'd experienced in the past? Well, just about everything. <laughs> Let's talk about I, that. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to turn um, the accounting industry up on its head. So I come from two different spaces from the corporate world. I wanted to bring the things that I learned that worked really well for, for mid-sized businesses. I wasn't working for large companies. What worked really well for mid-sized companies, how it was, like I said, empowering the CEO, <clears throat> how we used analytics and dashboards, uh, financial reviews to really empower business decisions in business. So, right. So I wanted mm-hmm. to take all the good stuff from corporate accounting and bring that to entrepreneurship because as entrepreneurs, you need to make all of that, those same business decisions, your business decisions as a small business owner is actually no different than with the business decisions that that CEO of the, those mid-sized organizations are making and really the large corporation corporations, mm-hmm. they are the same des- decisions. And so they are armed with all the information that they need in order to be able to make those decisions. And so I wanted to make sure that every single business owner had that same access to that same information. Now, in terms of the accounting industry, we have got some old bad habits. Mm. Imagine, you know, and I think most of our clients that we worked with over the years have had some kind of nightmare experience. You call your old tax accountant. They make you feel, can I swear here? They make you feel like, Oh, you can say whatever you want to say. They make you feel like shit. You're you're never worth their time. Uh, they they don't want to answer your questions. They give you short, confusing answers on the tax code or um, some accounting language that doesn't make sense. And you leave their office or the Zoom call with them. Well, actually, most of them won't even get on Zoom. So you leave their office feeling completely defeated. Like your business is nothing, right? Like, oh my God, I knew I wasn't big enough. I knew I shouldn't have asked for help. I'm always, I'm never going to get the support that I, I need. So I should just pack it up. And it's because tax accountants don't know how to run a business. Mm-hmm. They went to school for taxes, just like you went to school for your craft. And they don't know how to run a business. So a lot of times we are asking our CPAs to be this business advisor that they're not able to be. And so we really, I went on a mission to flip 
the entire CPA bookkeeping accounting industry on its head and said, we're not billing by the hour or the minute. (laughs) We are not making you come to our office with a box of receipts. We are not going to make you feel like you are nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Every single one of our clients, no matter what their size is worth the same value to us at Kickstart Accounting. And we do everything that we can to make it a safe, non-judgmental space where we can break down accounting language so that we can use it in business. So let me ask you this then, because I think one of the things that's difficult is when when you're looking at your business and making the right financial decisions, you have to, I guess, you know, in some ways be the CFO of your business, right? Mm-hmm. And what are the things that we should be considering then when we're looking at that? Like, like what should we be thinking of? Because I think especially a lot of business owners, if they're new, they're just like, I got to get clients, I got to sell stuff, but they're not thinking of a lot of the particulars that are probably going to bite them in the ass later. Yeah. Um, you know, starting with a brand new business owners, business owner, being the CFO of your business is going to mean something different, a little bit different at each stage. Call it like right. your under 100K stage. At this stage, we are really working on our fundamentals. We are separating business, business expenses and income from our personal expenses and income. Um, we're setting up our systems and processes. Uh, we're proving a concept that works. So once we've done that, we're trying to get help in our, in our business because we know that we can't do it all, but we're really focusing on the basics to make sure that we have good habits that as our business actually takes off, that we're going to be able to take those good habits into the next stage. And this is also the time that a lot of business owners have gone from being an employee, so getting a regular paycheck Mm -hmm. to becoming an LLC and having to take owner's draws or navigating their world, their new world as an S corp or an LLC. So at that time, we're like really just working on the the fundamentals. And so when we're sitting as the CFO of that, that type of business, you're still the CFO. You still have to take it serious, but we are thinking of it as, am I mastering good habits that I can take to the next stage with me. Does that make sense? It makes sense. And I, I also think like one of the things too is expectations too. Do you get what I'm saying? Because you're, you're talking about a lot of people coming from being um, an employee where they had a, a guaranteed salary or whatever it is. And it's like, I, I, I know I had these habits early on too. And a lot of people I've talked to had similar habits were like, well, I'm, you know, I'm the boss now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I think you have to kind of start out with those right habits or you're, you're not going to, you know, you're going to be starting out making less money. So you have to start out with a lot of these right habits or things that are going to hurt a lot fast. Yeah. I mean, for our clients who um, unfortunately don't start off on the right foot or maybe they're an accidental entrepreneur, we see them overpaying in taxes because they're, they're not keeping good record keeping. So they don't have the tax deductions. They're overpaying in taxes. They're not paying themselves. So a lot of times they're husband, wife, family gets resentful, like, okay, you quit your job for a hobby. Why aren't you contributing to the family? Uh, Even if they're doing it in a nice way, (laughs) they might still be saying it. This is so funny because I'm thinking of myself like nine years ago and remembering like similar things. (laughs) Oh, shoot. Flashbacks. (laughs) (laughs) PTSD. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so we're, we're we're overpaying in taxes. We're not getting ourselves paid. Um, and we're really living from a place of scarcity and and fear. So by creating, and so I don't want to be, I want to make sure I'm being very clear of like, okay, guys, what habits am I creating? Uh, we're not, we're not talking in code. The, the habits really are pretty simple. Separate your business and personal get an accounting system, make sure it's set up correctly and start working with a money team, find a money team so that they can help you make sure that it, that, that things are, um, categorized quick correctly and QuickBooks is being maintained. Hmm. Then from there, I've never heard that term money team used before. Oh yeah. I love money team. Okay. Money team. There's three people on a money team. Okay. You have a bookkeeper. The bookkeeper is your actual like number one team player, because if it isn't, if the actual information is not input into the system correctly, nothing else works. Mm. Nothing else works. It is the most important role in your money team. So we need to have a bookkeeping bookkeeper. So that could be a person or a firm 
like our firm, we need a tax, a tax person, right? So we need somebody who understands the tax law. Uh, we do believe that these should be two different people, two different companies. And I feel, feel very strongly about that. We need checks mm. and balance. So, um, oh, that's at really our interesting. Firm, so not people that just agree or just disagree with each other. Exactly. And that's what happens at, at firms. Mm. You have a tax firm that offers bookkeeping and all they want to do is make the financials look good for taxes. Mm. That's it. They're guiding you because they're a tax firm where we take a very different approach. We're guiding you to run your freaking business because if without that, you don't have anything to file taxes on. So when you're, when you're recording your transactions, when you're maintaining QuickBooks, you're maintaining them in a way that's going to allow you to look at the numbers and make business decisions, not just tax. Now you're going to use the same financials for tax time. They're, mm-hmm. they're used for both, but you're using, you're setting up QuickBooks and you're maintaining QuickBooks and you're looking at the numbers throughout the year. Now you have your tax team to say, Hey, here's what I would do for taxes. And I hear this all the time, especially at the end of the year, clients will call us and say, Hey, my tax accountant just told me that I should go spend $30,000. Um, you know, I don't want to have to pay that money to the tax, to the the IRS, to the big guy. I'm like, well, you don't have $30,000 to spend, so don't do it. And, and they're like, well, well, what do I do? I'm going to end up owing you taxes. I'm like, why are we sa- why are we spending a dollar to save 30 cents? Mm-hmm. Unless you need that expense, don't go spend money for it. Right. So it's, so mm-hmm. it's having two people on your team that can talk to each other that says, this is what we think for management purposes, for cash purposes. And this is what we think for, for taxes. Now let's agree on what's the best approach together. Right. So two different mm-hmm. people. Now we have a third person on the money team. We also need a financial advisor or, or planner. So somebody who's helping you build, build wealth, because as a business owner, you are going to create wealth. I believe that if you are listening to this podcast, you are going to be a successful business owner because you are doing mm. the work to create a successful business. And so we need to plan on, on having that wealth. Mm. Very cool. So I, I kind of pulled this off where we were. You were yeah. talking about the habits and then I was like, oh, money team, what's that? So so the, the habits we were talking about, um, you know, the money team was one of them, but I don't want to pull us too far off so we, we can, we can. I really appreciate you, you loop, looping back my, um, I'll go ping, ping, ping. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, I'm one of those people too. I'm like, wait, what does that word mean? I, I like don't like to jump past words I don't get because then I like, I, I don't know. It's just how my brain works. Yeah, no, I, the, the listeners thinking the same thing. So they, so they appreciate it. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So you're talking right. about the, the right habits. Yeah, right habits. So we're separating our business and personal. We're setting up an accounting system. We're getting the right people on our team. So we have right people, right seats. Um, mm-hmm. And we're talking to our money team because they're working through QuickBooks. We're talking to the money team about how we get ourselves paid. Now, this under 100K time period, you might be paying yourself a low amount via owner's draws. But the idea is that we're creating the habit. So I don't care if you start with $5 a week hundred dollars a month, right? Like whatever it might be, we're getting in the habit of creating, creating that, that paycheck for you. Now, as we start to scale, I call the next tier, like the one to two fifty. we have a concept mm-hmm. that works, right? We're, we're growing. Um, we're, we're excited for the growth and now we need to start to build out a team, right? We need to be looking at our financials on a regular basis so that we can hire contractors or employees. We might become an S corp at this point. Uh, we need to start understanding as money comes in where the money's going because I, I, the number one question we get from our clients, where's all the money going? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have revenue coming who, who, who in. Who is this? Who is this person taking all this money named U.S. government? Like, why do I pay that person so much? Yeah, it's like the elf on the shelf is coming and taking all your business money. Um, it's the number one question we get from from our clients. And so, at this point, at this time, this is when mm-hmm. it's really important to start to tune into the CFO, CEO seat of your business, where we are looking at monthly or quarterly financial statements. So your money team should be sending you financial statements and 
how and an interpretation or an analysis at our firm, we call it the snapshot um, Mm -hmm. of your financials so that you are able to look at them at a high level and then be able to use them to make business decisions. It's this really, really beautiful, um, empowering confidence that it, when you can tune into that, like you turn into this badass business owner. Cause you're like, yeah, mm. I can spend this money because I know I have it. I know what my profit is. I know I'm getting paid. I know my team's getting paid and I'm stepping into the power. I love that because I think a lot of people are making those decisions from such a standpoint of uncertainty and they're kind of like, well, I hope this works. Do you you know what I mean? Rather than understanding like, okay, I have the basics and I know now I'm investing in the next thing I need to. Do do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Or not spending anything because they're scared. So post pandemic, Mm -hmm. I think what we hear more than anything is I see that I have cash. I will tell you post pandemic, that has been a big change in our sales process is how tightly people hold a dollar to the chest when they didn't two years ago. Mm -hmm. Now business is going well, right? So I think we are seeing our clients grow at record speed. Um, Mm -hmm. It's been really fun to send out financial statements um, here in 2023 because we're still seeing that growth year over year. And Mm -hmm. So no, no matter what news channel you're you're watching, um, what we're seeing in the entrepreneur space is um, still record growth for for most of our our clients. And what's cool is that because they have the numbers, and we're able to send that to them, we're able to see mm. may, uh, maybe there might be an eerie feeling in the air. You can tune into your numbers and know that despite that, this is what the numbers say. Um, but but post pandemic, there is this. Um, I, I just think yeah, keeping keeping the cash in the bank, keeping it close to your to your chest, and just be, having a little bit of a fear around reinvesting in the business or paying themselves out or or hiring on too many team members, mm-hmm. but. Again, when you know your numbers, when you're able to see, okay, I know what my operating expenses are. I know how much cash is going to go back out the door in debt. Now I know how much I need to save. We did this really fun calculation with um, with a client in, in quarter four, where we, we call it the true cash balance, right? So mm-hmm. we took her operating expenses over the last 12 months. And we said, all right, on average, here's how much you spend to just operate your business, to exist as a business owner. And then we're going to add to that. And we added, here's the average amount you need to pay towards your debt repayments, right? So we added that. And then how much on average they were taking out in owner's draws from their business. And we were able to give them that total number. So it's like their total cash outflow every month. And they've been slowly working over the last several months in building a three month reserve. And we just sent them their financial snapshot last month where we were able to celebrate with them that they finally got there. They have, right. It's It's super exciting. And now that they're there, they're like, okay, now I feel like I can invest in the next thing, right? Now I feel like I can reinvest in my business, bonus out my team, bonus out myself. They can do it with confidence. So let me ask you this, because you referenced some, but I'm I'm curious, like, you know, when you're looking at the numbers you should be monitoring as a CEO, like what are those kind of core numbers that you tell people to be monitoring? Because you know, there, there's so many different things we can kind of watch to keep ourselves busy, but they're not like the key things we should be looking at. And I, I'm I'm curious what you tell people to watch. Yeah. Ooh, this busyness thing. It's like, um, it's like, oh yeah, I'm knows. working so much. Oh, okay. What are you, what are you producing with that time? <laughs> yeah. What are you working on? Um, so there's the top three numbers that I believe every business owner needs to know. And we include this in every single snapshot that we send to our clients. So the first number, it's not what you think. It is not gross revenue. You mm. heard me right. It is not gross revenue. I want to know what your gross profit is. So that is sales minus cost of goods sold or direct costs. So who do you need to pay to deliver your product or service? So gross revenue, how much money came in into the bank, how much money you took brought in from your clients minus 
any cost of goods sold or direct labor costs. That's your gross profit. And I want you to keep track of that every single month. And you can go back in time. You can look at this over the last 12 months and then keep track of like, keep that as a metric that you look at every month moving forward. And this is going to give you clues. When we look backwards, we can see what the trend has been. Now, as we go forward, we can see, okay, why is this going up? Why is it going down? And we can ask ourselves meaningful questions. And that KPI key performance indicator can guide the questions we ask ourselves. Mm. All right. So that's number one. I got two more. Number two, we're going to go all the way to the bottom of the income statement. I love that it's only three, by the way, because I think there's people that can look at like 25 stats and like, all right, I'm watching all these. And it's like, you, you can't possibly control all those. Please, God, don't like do not look (laughs) unless unless there's 25 meaningful numbers, you know, um, unless you're building out a scorecard and and somebody else is keeping track. I I think in an organization, there's more than 25 meaningful numbers. But I think like kind of the higher you you go up at looking at your business, there's a few that matter more. Right. Like if you go into each division of your company, there's a bunch that matter. Yes. But there's core ones that matter to where your business is going. Yeah. So I think these are the three in terms of the finances of your business. You're right. Like there might, there's going to be sales numbers. There's going to be marketing numbers, right. but these are the finance numbers. All right. So the first, the one, first one was at the top of the income statement. We're going to go all the way to the bottom of the income statement. Again, you're running one report. So I'm not asking you to mil- run a million reports here. One report. It's the income statement by month. Look at it for the last 12 months. And now we're tracking it for the next 12 It's the net income or loss of your business. And to me, this is the most important one. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's going to leave clues. Well, if you're not making money, you can always do it so long. Except for if you're running your business for tax, right? If your tax account, your tax account might be telling you, go spend $30,000, Jeremy, because I don't want you to pay taxes. (laughs) Right? Exactly. Now, now we're losing money and we don't even know why we're not doing it because it, it served the business. We're not doing it because Mm -hmm. we were investing in a new strategy or new growth or a personal goal. We're literally doing it to avoid taxes. So watching the profit and loss by month is going to give us clues to ask questions. When we see a loss, we have to ask ourselves what happened. Did I have an annual payment maybe for a subscription, a membership? Did I invest in a new growth opportunity for the business? Um, Did I have to pay out a a large contract? Maybe my sales dipped and I need to look Mm -hmm. for that seasonality in my business. But don't let's just look at the bad stuff, right? Like I'm not saying look at the losses right. and sit there and moan and groan. I also, right? Like this isn't a pity party. Uh, that's not what the CFO does. The CFO doesn't just pay attention to the bad stuff. They also celebrate the good stuff. So mm-hmm. when we're looking along the bottom line, we're going to take those profits and we're going to ask ourselves, well, hell, what happened that month? I want to exactly. replicate that. Right? How do we do more of that? Yes. Yes. Let's make that not an anomaly. Um, so we're using these numbers to spot trends, to zoom in so that we can ask ourselves more questions. Now, our last number, um, I talked about it a little bit already, is our, mm-hmm. our net cash outflow, right? And so I already kind of walked through how to get there. It's our average operating expenses plus our average debt payments plus our average owner's, owner's draws. This is on average how much money goes out out of our business every month. And I want you to keep track of how much money is leaving your business every month. And that does not stop at the income statement because you have debt, debt, you have credit cards, and we have owner's draws that we have to be aware of. And so by understanding how much cash is going out of our business, we can create that reserve and start saving for it. We can know if we're taking out enough owner's draws, if we have too much debt that we're we're going to collapse our business and we can, again, spot those trends and tune in and ask ourselves questions. Very cool. Danielle, I've really enjoyed this conversation for people listening. If they want to find out more about you or connect with you, how's going to be the best way for them to do that? Uh, Go to kickstartedaccountinginc.com. You can learn um, more about the company. Let's tune into our podcast, Entrepreneur Money Stories. And, um, Instagram, uh, the team is putting out these hilarious reels right now. Um, I, I keep on mentioning it because 
if you thought accounting, like there's no way accounting can be funny, I like totally challenge that. These are hilarious. So Kickstarter well, accounting. I know our marketing team has been trying to get us to make one of those. I don't know if you've seen it, but like the, they, all the people from the office dancing videos. Um, so I don't know. We're going to have to start doing some funny reels too. So I, I, we're going to have right. to see that and raise you. <laughs> here's, your, here's your challenge. <laughs> Very cool. Daniel Hayden, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me.